don't have any guests with us this morning. Um, so do we just, I think we can dispense with introductions. Um, and does everyone have the agenda handy? Yes. Okay. Um, is there any discussion on the agenda? We might not be able to get to everything without um, Shana's input. Okay, not seeing anything. So I believe we could just proceed. Mm -hmm. okay. um, on to public comments. We have no public with us today. So we'll <clears throat> um, keep moving forward, um, which brings us to reviewing and approving the minutes from our prior meeting. Um, and I'm just pulling those up. So I'll need, probably need a few minutes to just um, look over those quickly. Shana says she apologizes. She is trying to get on, but her computer rebooted uh, without, you know what I mean? Like when it does that thing and it has to update, you don't have a choice. It's right. doing that. Yeah. <laughs> That's not funny. That's just such a thing that would happen on a Wednesday at eight o'clock in the morning. Right. Yeah. Did someone actually send me the agenda? I just realized the one I was looking at, I think is from two weeks ago. Yes. Thanks, Cameron. Let me know when you. I'm ready. Hand. Someone else joined us? No, okay. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. So I'm ready. I reviewed them again. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any comments. All right. Can we get a motion to approve? I always forget. Am I a voting member? Can I make motion? <laughs> okay. I, I move we approve the uh, the minutes. I'll second. Um, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? And I think that's good. We're approved. Um, okay. Uh, let's move on. We've, we're on to um, our kind of learning round table and just kind of open this up to folks. Does anyone have anything they want to share? Um, that they found interesting and relevant in the past couple of weeks. No. I actually read a really great article about Tabitha, um, who is helping as part of Creative Discourse, Tabitha Moore. And I think it was in the digger, and I will send it to y'all, but it was about um, the racism that she's experienced in 
her hometown and mm -hmm. and how she has to leave like um, people were targeting her children and it was just really um i mean i i mean obviously i think we all kind of know these things are happening but it was just um a really bold and stark view on how it's impacted her as a person and mm -hmm. how so like, she's feeling forced out of her community so i just thought it was interesting and i i think it's good to sort of see that um not good to see that but like good to um read this like honest uh, report of that i think a lot of folks just again think it doesn't happen here kind of mm -hmm. so it was it was interesting to read that and also since she's worked with us on this project so i will try to find that and send that out to folks but that was my sort of week um where exactly was she living Cameron? I think it's Rutland, but I she I don't want to. Yeah, she has she wasn't living in Rutland, and I think she's I don't even know I don't know if she's still in Rutland County or if she's left the that area altogether. Mm -hmm. um, but she's um, head of the uh, the NAACP okay. in Rutland. What I was I don't know if she still is. Um, but hmm. yeah, I think she left that position and is doing this work with Creative Discourse and some other groups, but I think a, na a woman named Mia Schultz took over that NAACP mm. position. Yeah, unfortunately, there's a another story of that. Um, I don't know if you all saw this. Um, there was a, an African-American woman in Milton who uses a wheelchair who in December or maybe it was earlier in the fall was um targeted and harassed and actually st struck by an, a white woman in a driving her vehicle in a parking lot um and um was not assisted by the local police in any way um so there was the peace and justice center in burlington was trying to raise awareness um and get some action on this but um that didn't seem to come to much and um, there's been a fundraising call recently. She has been so harassed that she's going to leave Milton and relocate, I think, out of state. Um, so, sadly, another example. And I, I maybe this report, Cameron mentioned this, but I've, I don't know where I saw it as well, but there seems to be a trend of particularly African-American women being really targeted and harassed um, and so this seems to be happening um, kind of routinely. Um, so yeah, something to kind of think about and be aware of for sure. Yeah, there was something in, in, in and I can't remember where I saw it about you know, the obvious point that the previous administration has un just unle unleashed the rise of racism, um, anti-Semitism, um, uh, xenophobia, and and you know how to sort of put it back, put the, put it back in the bottle and put the cork on really tight. But um, uh, it, it is it is a serious problem. I think was really stepping back to 1870s or 1880s here. So. Mm -hmm. Except it's not yeah. confined to it's not confined to the South. It's... Well, I don't think it ever was. <laughs> yeah. This is true. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll put in there too. There was um, Keisha who's working with us. I don't know if you all saw her article. Maybe she had shared that. Um, but right, right in the same vein, and and there was a woman who was on the. Um, I think Hartford Select Board, who was a woman of color who ended up stepping down because she was getting too harassed and like, yeah. what else, you know, that's just the same story. So. Anything else, anyone? Wants to share what they've come across or learned? I guess one thing on a, on a 
less learned, but um, on a more slightly more positive note, the it's been really interesting to see at the um, at the legislature and like what issues are getting prioritized. Like there, and I think having leaders like Keisha as a senator um, and other things is really, you know, helping have having really great leadership on this, but like racial justice and um, social justice issues are like really being prioritized in a way that I absolutely never seen and like being considered in a whole suite of policies in a way they never were thought about before. So, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the unveiling of the racism was that has been there, I think at least has woken people up and is changing. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is doing something funny, but um, but anyway, there's there's a lot of kind of work and thought, and I mean, figuring out how to how to do that well and right is this whole other challenge. But at least there's attention and um, recognition of the importance of of working on it and working to address it and bringing in voices of people that haven't had a seat at the table for a long time. That's good. Do you think COVID has had much to do with that, or is that really more, really, really um, not so much the center of the issue? I think less COVID, although it's just like another yeah. stark example of the discrepancy in, you know, what people are facing based on mm -hmm. um, who they are. So I think that mm -hmm. is just like another point underscoring the importance of it. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, let's move on. So item six, report backs from other related city committees. Uh, Michael, maybe start with you. Is there anything to report from, and Lauren, from the police review committee? Um, let's see, we have not yet heard back. We, we, have, we have a representative from our committee who is in contact with Keisha. Uh, his name is Dan Towell. Um, and I think I reported that last time. We have we sent them some questions. We're waiting to hear uh, from them again, and um, so we're kind of on hold in, in that. Um, other than that, uh, we are starting. We we've, we're starting to sort of organize the data that we have already and um, pigeonhole it into several a bunch of topics, and each one of the each member of the committee has selected one. So we haven't really started talking about what we've found yet, but we are accumulating resources and uh, a lot, there's a lot of data. I think we're being swamped by data at this point. And the question is how to, how to start thinking about it and use it and using it. Mm -hmm. so, I think that's all I, that I can report. Did you have a chance, your committee, well, they probably haven't met yet, um, see the UVM study that came out, I think it was last week, about policing in Vermont? I uh, haven't seen the, well, the one that I saw was the one about, <clears throat> excuse me, about traffic. Is that the one you uh, the, uh, driving, um, uh, driving while black and brown? Because there was an update to that. This one was, I know we've, yeah. That's it, yeah. Yeah, this was, it was just released, um, so it might be an update on some of those older yes. studies. Um, yeah, right. I have it actually. I, I after I went and got it, got the old one photocopied. Two days later, the new one came out. So, and it's twice as thick. Mm -hmm. So uh, I haven't I haven't waded into it, but um, I don't imagine that the the general results are going to be much different. But I will look more closely at some of the some of the figures. Um, I, I think it's interesting that that's that you know that that, that the and it, it may just be that that's uh, uh, what most police are doing is working in tra you know traffic stops you know and yeah. um, whereas obviously there are other serious problems uh, in Berlin in in Burlington right now but uh, this one at least is quantifiable easily quantifiable I have read that. Um, it's very difficult to get information about 
other kinds of issues with policing that uh, the, that the re record keeping is is um, varies from community to community and there's really no no statewide much less nationwide standard um, and with the, the disband and the, this the uh, the previous administrations um, shutting down um, FBI and uh, and the Department of Health efforts to look at um, race, uh, issues about race and policing um, there's a big gap in what we know about what, what's going on because um, I've been <clears throat> one of my assignments is to look at use of force and it's clear that there the statistics are totally unreliable um, okay. in that area mm -hmm. so traffic stops are at least uh, uniformly re reported and, mm -hmm. and catalog cataloged so right. that's that's where it's a good place to start but yeah. it doesn't doesn't by any means give us a whole picture mm -hmm. great thank you um lauren any updates from the land of city council no i mean we haven't met for a couple of weeks which is mm -hmm. unusual <laughs> so <laughs> i yeah it's been you know obviously some interesting conversations around the budget but that was the most substantive mm -hmm. recent thing that um that has been going on and then we meet again a week from today so no no other <clears throat> and, we, and i guess the three big three, news from there the four of us were at the city, last city council meeting one way or another and i did I, yep. and i thought that bill did a better job explaining what what the what the police budget how the police budget was arrived at. I don't know if it, it if, if it convinced anybody who was already unconvinced, but but it was it was a better. It was an improvement. So thanks to Cameron for passing that along from us. Yeah, I mean there was there was not a defunding of the police. So if no. that's right. what you support, which that was certainly um, you know what a number of folks so because we're kind of leaving those questions to this analysis i think that part is frustrating but it also the yeah i don't know how many i i was still finding it confusing even though like i knew what he was saying i was like i i think this is still really confusing <laughs> if i was just following it um like moving pots of money around and like cost of living increases and extra pay period and like how does this it's like, and you couldn't really do a good apples to apples comparison to other departments because there were just so many moving pieces. It seemed, even though we really didn't treat the police department differently, we treated them the same way, but it still seems like somehow. <laughs> and then with the budgeting <laughs> process, what, where are we as we get closer to town meeting day with things? So yeah. now it's approved. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, so it just is what it is. That's what will be on the ballot on town meeting day. Um, you know, and it is like a budget number. So that's what you're approving. So I yeah. think there's still, you know, there's, that's, that's what we're following. And, you know, but as we saw this past year, like we had to be incredibly, we being the city staff, <laughs> getting the credit for all the hard work of like trying to figure this out, but, you know, then have to be nimble from there of, what to do with what's coming in and priorities but so i think there's still obviously a role for this committee and i think the the work that was done like thinking about like the advice of earlier in the process and how this is built in more like at, at the ground level like where cameron's working of like with departments is is a really good lesson learned yeah, that yeah, the tool that y'all gave us uh, or gave council is definitely something we're going to be folding into our, um, you know, budget discussions starting next year. Mm -hmm. Those conversations had already happened by the time you know y'all develop that tool, for council. But you know, that's certainly something that we'll fold into our conversations, and we're kind of we're, it's what well, I'm excited. I'll speak for myself yeah. about like having a, a structure to those conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe Cameron, if you could think about other ways we could contribute to that 
because you know that we were, you know, whip that out very quickly with just a little bit of research. Um, so if there's other work we can do to assist city staff kind of baking that in even more robustly, um, maybe we could have that as a discussion topic, you know, as we get into the spring, um, just so we can make it easier for the city staff to kind of adopt that and, and use it. I'll note that, thank you. Um, are there any other committees or city business that we want to hear about? Well, I'll add one thing, and that's the, uh, the other committee that I, I'm on is on the Montpelier Community Fund. And, um, and uh, as, as you know, the, the uh, city council kept our funding level, which they didn't cut it, which was good because more than half of that goes to nonprofits that have to do with providing social services. Um, and so that was, and while those grants are, for the most part, pretty small ones, there are a few large ones in there. And so um, it is a, does constitute a major contribution of tax funds to uh, organizations that are, that are providing social, social services and, um, and the kinds of things that our committee is interested in. So that was good. That was good that, that we were we weren't we weren't cut, and we were able to do uh, the deliberation without without having to really pinch pennies. Um, you know, we had more more money requested than we than we gave gave out, but it wasn't really because we were ha we had these constraints. We just you know we 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 super we look at those applications seriously to see how. Well, they you know they present their their case and what they've done in the past year, um, and also um, what their needs are. We, we we rarely add. We I don't think we've ever added money to uh, you know more than they've asked for, um, but we we try very hard to at least do level funding and, mm -hmm. and accomplish. We were able to accomplish that, so mm -hmm. that's some help. Yeah, the presentation your your representative made was really well done. It was a great yeah. story. Okay, that's all. That's all I have. Okay, um, why don't we keep going then? So now we're on to creative discourse updates, um, and this is where I think we're missing Shana the most. She's going to try to call in. Um, I have talked to Keisha about um, scheduling city staff, and so she's given us three dates. Um, so right now I'm working on uh, figuring out which dates works for which in the uh, highest concentration. So um, just to be honest, the, the issue we're running into is our police and fire group. I mean, I figured that would be the hardest one to schedule, but they all work um, really long. Sh they all work shift work, right? And so, and so getting them all into a room is kind of rough. So um, a digital room, just for the record, we are not <laughs> making people join in person. Um, so uh, we're just working on that, um, trying to get that figured out. Um, and that I still wanna meet with um, my two uh, black staff members independently. So just trying to make sure Brian and Emily's schedules are, I well, um, accommodated so it's we're just working that out but you yeah. know that's all identified um i've also reached out to a couple of our lgbtq ia organizations and so they're they just want to know what day and time so they can advertise you know it's it's less of like let's find 12 people exactly they just want to advertise it for us so i think that's fair and so that's the issue i'm running into and i don't know about y'all but like people don't want to be, like people don't want to identify like yes I John Smith want to come it's mm -hmm. tell me when I, you want me to be there and I will be there if I can you know so I'm running into that problem and so it's a little harder to schedule when I you know I just kind of want to be given a date and then work around that date um, so that's sort of where uh, I'm at with that uh, but otherwise good progress it's at least yeah, three like it. that are done great is this Shana? I hope so. 
this is hi sorry you guys yeah, that's still, okay. still waiting on my computer so and i don't have so i don't have my like notes from my my talk which could have just first last week but i'm um, going to share anything from memory although i think great i think Keisha also sent kind of a summary um to you cameron and it sounds like that's what you guys are going over um is there anything so yeah cameron was just sharing about her work to schedule things with the city. Is there anything, Shana, you can update us on from memory about where things are at? Yeah, I mean, I think um, it sounds sounds like <laughs> I don't. I'm, this might be repeats because I came in kind of halfway through the update. Apologies, um, but that they're going to be doing like one on like interview. If there's only a couple of of um, BIPOC city staff of just doing those as like interviews and not as um, full on focus groups, but of um, wanting to to start scheduling them and and I it's almost it's, it seems to me I think almost like um, what you were talking about Cameron of just wanting to like set a time and then you know recognizing that not everyone's going to be able to come of all the people that they're going to invite but of like you know setting a time with like one or two people who are really excited about coming and then um, and then working backwards from there um, and then yeah so you were oh I'm sorry yeah no, go ahead. Ask them to to just do that, like just to make, do this at the time. Yeah, and it doesn't even have to be like we want to do this group at this day. It's just here's five days and times that work for us. That we can just sort of pick who, what affinity group we want to. Schedule oh, I thought time. I thought they they did that. Did they? They did, did that, that for you? city staff. They did that for city staff. Oh, the, am I like correct? I think they did one for the city staff and then one for the BIPOC community affinity group, they offered two days. So I mean, that's just not all of them, you know? So yeah, well, because I think they wanted to do a cup, they wanted to do those first four before oh, okay. op like having the more broad open ones, because then like to, to then go, you know, go back into um, edit the question, you know, kind of do like that first cut first before um, doing the, the bigger round of introductions. So okay. that um, context was missing because, from that email, so sorry yep um uh, but yeah so wanting to have the the meetings with um with all, you know all the different city staff groups with the um with uh bipoc montpelierites and with the leaders of um community organizations um before going before like scheduling the the other meetings because also reckon like they want to do the survey around when they do that launch as well um but yeah like wanting to talk to city staff um and BIPOC spaces in particular before sending out the survey and um and things like that yeah so like scheduling all of these ones in February and then scheduling the next ones in March was the Sorry, I thought we had talked about that as a team a couple of weeks ago too, so apologies. Um, so the ones that they want to do, are the, the city staff, the BIPOC, um, and, and, that's, and that's different from the BIPOC city staff, or is that included in that? Because we, we had originally, I think, yeah. uh, separated those, those two, but so city staff, in one way or another, BIPOC, city residents, community leaders, and what was the fourth one? The LGD, LGB, um, and police and fire. Oh, oh, police and fire. Okay. Right, and that's from memory, but it should be on that on that um, okay. form so one, on the on the on the okay, so list. One, two, three, four, four, four constituency groups before writing a, a preliminary report or sending out a survey. Is that the plan? Yeah, I don't think it'll okay. be a preliminary report. I think it'll be for sending out the survey and okay. for like focusing in on the questions for the other groups. Okay. Um, and then, so we won't really, um, the, the first group that we'll really have to figure out the stipends for, because, you know, for all the city staff and for the leaders of civic organizations, we, we won't have to do stipends, but for the, um, you know, BIPOC and then everyone from there on, we will, like, we should be doing stipends. And then we, that was a question that I brought to them and they basically flipped it back around on us. They were like, what? Like, whatever you guys think, you know, like make sure you have the conversation, like report it back to me. 
Um, but, you know, they said in other places, like the money all came from the city, from the school district, from these municipal sources, and they didn't have to go through grant funds or um, other like local fundraising efforts. So they just like set the amount and went from there. But they're like, we recognize if you guys are, you know, doing the fundraising, you know, you, if you commit to doing $50 a person and 35 people show up, like that's going to add up really, you know, like it's, it's, they were really like wanting it to be fair and, um, you know, wanting, wanting it to be reasonable for, um, for our group. So um, I didn't know if folks had any thoughts about that. Cause yeah. I asked the question and they did not, they, they turned, they turned it back around on us. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I went, I thought about this again because while well, I was doing the minutes last night at, at, at a late hour, actually what I was doing was my, since my, my own notes were almost illegible to me, I, I watched on Orca our meeting again, which is why, oh, wow. <laughs> this is why you got those minutes at two in the morning, but um, <laughs> But I, but I think it's time for us to decide, at least on an amount, um, and and how that's going to be, because we were, we left that issue uh, whole, unresolved, um, and I, you know the two amounts that I was hearing were, you know, uh, is it going to be a hundred dollars? Is it going to be fifty dollars? And in what form? Is it going to be in in gift cards or credit cards or or cash? Um, and, and I think we, we just have to, if, because of, if we're going to do fundraising now or, or go into our, right. our, our bank account, we have to know how much we have to budget for that. Um, exactly. Off the top of your head, anyone, do we know what funds we have in hand? Yeah. Um, because it's, about, that. It's, it's, in the, it's in the minutes. The, uh, right. About $700 from individuals, which I think is the easiest you know, funds to spend for stipends. Over 2,000, I'm trying to find the exact number. Well, there was a $3,000 grant from Ben and Jerry's, right? Oh, no, a two, a, 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 no the $3,000 grant is the one that we were waiting on. Mm -hmm. But there was a tw uh, 20, what was, what was the Ben and Jerry's 2,500, something like that? Um, it's 20, it's two, okay. So between the Ben and Jerry's grant and donations, you have $2,718. And the, B and, uh, the Ben and Jerry's is un, un, um, unspecified, right? It's just $2,000 gift, is that it? So we could use that for, for the stipends too. Is, is that right, Cameron? I think so, I didn't pull oh. that. Oh. Out. So I don't, I think so though. Well, Shana, you wrote the grant, right? Yeah, I can't, I'll have to go back and check. I think I was telling myself we only have the $700, but we can, yeah, I can go back and check. Well, some quick math. Uh, if we were to, <laughs> yeah. if we were to offer $50 stipends um, and let's say we somehow had up to 50 participants, we're looking at $2,500 in stipends at that formula. Um, I mean, 50 feels like a reasonable stipend, um, but I guess this depends on whether the Ben and Jerry's money is unencumbered or, or restricted or any way. I mean, and even if it's, why don't I just call them up and ask? Because, right, even if it, not written, you know, we might be able to just get that. That okay. Okay, great. And then, well, and then we also have a commitment from um, Montpelier Alive to do, uh, to, to, to uh, you know, get uh, local business donations as well. So, um, so the ask there would be like to ask for $50 for those and then give people the option of, of getting it to be cash or a check or um, or getting it from for a local business. Does that does that make sense? Yeah, I wonder but if we yeah, get into some increments. equity, some inequitable situations where people are getting either just cash or a gift card. Is that is that a weird situation where somebody gets one versus the other? I don't know. Okay. Is it possible to just offer them the op an option? Here we have two. We have two possibilities. We have 
fifty, you know, a fifty dollar cash or or fifty dollar, and um, it would be nice if the if the gift card could be um, not from a particular, not for a particular business, but to be spent in in a local in a, in one of the local you know list of where you can right. spend it so that. Yeah, um, it stays local, um, but it's not. You don't. You have to. You have to go to Bear Pond right, to so use it, business. something like that. Right. Yeah. I'll need. To I'm not sure exactly money out of your account too. Like if if we can, I'll, I'll just have to figure out how to physically get money that's not invoiced. If that makes sense, it might be one of those things where, like, because it's city money, you have to account for where it's going, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, I'll just need to figure out how to do that. No worries. Well, because it'll go to Creative Discourse, right? And then they will have to disperse report back. It. Yeah, of, of the dispersal. Yep. Okay. So we'll just have, we'll just, I'll figure out what the best process is and we'll work it out with our meetings with the public. Thanks. But yeah, but and creative discourse did not seem too concerned about offering like local business gift cards as an option. So they could they could manage having it be an option like doing that or having it be a check or whatever it was. So are we in agreement that fifty dollars sounds like the right amount? Yeah. Is that a motion? Seconded. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, yeah, that sounds that sounds okay to me. Mm -hmm. With the idea that it can be offered as cash or or gift card, or do we do we need to we or do we need to be specific about that? I don't I don't think we do. But fifty dollar value of something sounds fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we have a we have a motion and a second. Cool. Um, does anyone have any other creative discourse updates or issues, questions? I'm gonna vote on the fifty dollars. Oh sorry. Commissioning and stuff. <laughs> oh sorry. All right, all in favor of a $50 value stipend for our focus group participants, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Passed. Nice Thanks. work. Um, any other creative discourse business? Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I did just, I'm pulling, I downloaded Google right. Drive, pulled up my notes. So here we just went one sec real quick. Sure. Just to make sure. Oh, and then there was also the question of people participating in multiple buckets and multiple meetings um, that you guys had asked. And so I just wanted to report back on that of, um, they didn't seem to, um, uh, you know, too concerned about that, wanting each of the meetings, each of the spaces to be intersectional, right? So like someone who is participating in the BIPOC focus group can also be a youth person participating in the youth focus group, you know, like that that is good and important. And the only thing that they were like wanting to be, you know, careful about was of, um, you know, people like in positions of power, right? So of like um, not having the, you know, someone who is in a, um, in a, a leader of a social service organization participating in the youth group or, or you know whatever it is so kind of like in in that hierarchy sense right so of potentially not having like the chief of police participating in the BIPOC Montpelier rights group right um which I thought made made sense to me but that this this question that people could participate in multiple meetings mm -hmm. they were like sure sounds good okay Good. And I think, were, were there any other questions that you guys had for creative discourses that 
I had in my notes that I'm trying to find now. The SRO, the questions from the SRO policing group, um, you know, the group came up with seven questions or so on policing to incorporate into conversations and into the surveys. They won't get to all of the questions um, in every focus group, um, or we'll get all of the questions into the surveys, but by having some of the initial conversations, we'll be able to winnow it down. Um, and then to kind of avoid like overburdening folks, they're gonna have the BIPOC affinity space in particular, go over both options and have that be 90 minutes to be able to incorporate both the like general survey questions and the, the specific policing stuff all in the same, um, all in the same meeting um, and potentially offer a little bit more of stipends there, but we, I do not have an exact amount. So um, the, 90, that be 90 minutes. the 90 minute uh, time is just for the BIPOC group or is it going to be the standard of, of their? Just for the BIPOC group because it would be both um, for the, the um, for the group that you're a part of, Michael, <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> and like Mont for those Mont questions Mont and right. the Montpelier Police yeah. Review. Okay. Yeah. Two birds, one stone. Right. <clears throat> okay. And then, yeah, when we're making the list of of names, like when we're sending folks. Um, just to put in how they identify to them as much as, as we know. Um, so, right, so if they, um, so that they'll, you know, come in a little bit more prepared if they don't know who these people are. Mm -hmm. When, you know, sending those names directly to Keisha and Tabitha. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just, I, I'm realizing how silly this is of having it be like, just me having these conversations and then report back when I like, still don't have my computer <laughs> accessible. Does anyone want to like join me on these on these on these meetings? I'll ask once again. <laughs> you can always send them to me if I can if I have my time available I all I can be there to yeah. help. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, anything else Shana from you on creative discourse? That's all that I'm I'm Seeing in my in, on my phone, <laughs> so okay. apologies if there's yeah. more. No, don't no worry. Um, that's all that I'm remembering right now. Yeah, okay. we're seeing right now. Um, my well, phone has also now been saying about a minute remaining. Yeah. So let's see. <laughs> if it'll come yeah. back. It's a total buster. Um, let's move on. Uh, do we have any other business, folks? I have an announcement. Okay. Um, so uh, the city has been made aware, and so therefore we cannot not say anything that um, using Google Drives is actually a violation of open meeting law. So we'll be bringing that to council next week just to like ratify that, you know, committees shouldn't be using that to communicate. Um, so if we have any uh, uh, documents to edit, you need to, you uh, as a committee, if you have a document, send it out to the whole committee and then the committee can respond one like individually, not as like a reply all. And then we have to discuss that in uh, the open meeting. So I'm just, I'm announcing this to all my committees. Yeah. Um, we're all announcing it to all of our committees, just as a heads up. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. <clears throat> that was a bomb. <laughs> yeah, I, and I, I agree. Actually, I'm not a fan of Google Docs, uh, you know, of that kind of communication. But um, so I'm yeah. glad actually for it. But <laughs> but I, but I think others are not. So. We'll we'll see um, yeah. how that affects things. I, I would like on, on a related thing. I think it would be really helpful um, to send to all committee chairs. Um, the the um, the statute or whatever it is the rules for open meeting law because a lot of us are proceeding without really knowing them. The thing is, is that when when you get nominated or when you get appointed, uh, Jeremy, please let me know if you didn't get this. Did I, I did get them. 
Yeah. Yeah, you get a welcome packet and it has all those tools. Right. So everyone should have them, but you're right, we can do another <coughs> for that for sure. Yeah, it's a reminder because it's they are and there are some some members of committees who, who bridle at these, you know. Yeah. But so we did edit the welcome yeah, packet. Like send it out because, once a year or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll make a note of that. Um, we did edit the welcome packet. That's what we're asking council to approve because it's technically their mm -hmm. policies for committee meetings. And so we'll we can resend it out to everyone as soon as that's approved. We'll send it out to every committee, all of them. I remember we did, I don't think we did it this year, but last year, like um, Vermont League of Cities and Towns did what was an extremely long and detailed overview. It was like an hour and a half, or maybe it just felt like that, um, of open <laughs> meeting law. <laughs> um, but, but if we do that again, we could send that around to the groups if people would like to like hear it explained verbally instead of just reading a packet. So I don't know if that is is going to happen, but it was like a lot of like hypotheticals and scenarios and stuff, which was helpful to think through, like what are situations you might find yourself in. Um, so if if that's on the on the docket anyway, that could be useful to people who want to dig in more. Cameron, is there any kind of collaborative um, document editing platform that city staff do use that committees might have access to? So staff can, so that's like the thing, right? Like staff can use it for internal work. Got it. The public thing is just not allowed. Got it. But also we don't have any special, any software. Yeah. 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 We run into that at the medical center because of HIPAA mm -hmm. rules. We're not allowed to use anything that we don't have a business agreement with. So yeah, I understand. Um, any other business? Yes, I would like to raise the, the question about our meeting time. When we talked about this, I thought I was in September, I would be at working at the bakery. It turns out that I was misinformed. Uh, it, it, September should have been February. So, oh. um, but my schedule is uh, two days a week in the afternoons. So I can continue, I, I can, uh, it doesn't make any difference to me from that point of view, which day, which time we use. Um, mm -hmm. I, I will not be going to the bakery at 5.30 in the morning. Yeah. Uh, um, so if if we want to move it back, if we if we do want to move it to an afternoon, it's okay, or an evening, it's it, it, it's it's okay. If we want to keep it in the morning, it's all right with me too. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I if I was the only one who raised a, a concern about it. Um, well, I know Helen was the one advocating for the um, morning time, and is, is she? Or but what am I? Is that right in the morning time or the afternoon? I can't remember which one now. But uh, is she on? No, she didn't join. Okay. Because I guess if it doesn't make any difference to you, I, I would I, I would like to have it be the time when she would be easier for her to join. Does that make? Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm still okay with that. And I can't remember from, we can go back and re, I, I don't think it was in, in, the, in the minutes, but I can go back and, and uh, look at the meeting again to see what, what she had done as it, what she had said it was, was her preference. It, the, the, uh, that meeting is, was re recorded by ORCA and it's on the city website. You can get it uh, through the ORCA website. So I'll see if I can find it again. I mean, I believe that was the morning because it was going back to Wednesday morning because we were meeting Thursday afternoons and she wanted to change it, right? Is that yeah, right? I think, I, I, I think that's right. And I and I was the one who yeah. said that I, I was I thought but, I might not be able right. to do that, but um, but now I can, so we can continue morning is okay with me. Great. So um, do I, I'll make a motion to continue with our Wednesday morning meetings. Is that Wednesday, 8.30, every other Wednesday, 8.30 to 10? 
Yep. Okay. Okay. No. Second. Eight thirty to ten. Okay. <laughs> I second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Any opposed? So that passes. That is our new, new old meeting time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Um, other business, I had been I'm, tasked with, with updating. So I, I had been tasked with updating the copy for the website. Um, I have not done that yet. I, I still have it on my list, so I'm going to do my best to get to that um, uh, in the next few days. Um, so that's my update on that. Thing. Shana, were you going to say something? No, I'm saying I'm glad you don't have to, you're not going to have to be at work at 530 in the morning, Michael. That sounds hard. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> nothing, nothing helpful. It's okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind it too much, actually. Makes me go to bed sooner, so I don't write two. In, I don't send out meetings at two in the morning if I have to get up at, to be in five. Yeah, exactly. Anyone else have anything in other business? Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I think we're talking now about our agenda for the next meeting. Um, is it kind of cut and paste from this week or do we have new items to add? I have nothing extra. We can copy it from this week if you yeah. want. I think that seems okay. Well, um, are we going to talk some, sometime talk about fundraising, about how we're going to do this, or do we want to have more people um, when we have this conversation? Uh, I mean, typically that gets rolled under the creative discourse, or is it a, is it a bigger question than creative discourse? Well, are, are we going to do we want to do we want to raise money for any other purpose? from the community is uh, and that's where we have to go because we're we're up against a brick wall with foundations mm -hmm. uh, uh, except maybe except for the ben and jerry's foundation and i guess the acorn foundation must have been uh, acceptable because that's where the last uh, last application went but everybody else requires a 501c3 um and and um and the only way to do that would be to go back to the Montpelier Foundation, but they don't seem to be interested in doing that, right, Cameron? Yeah. So, so we, we well, have. Doesn't the city of Montpelier have a C three number? Like, if we need no. a C three no. number to apply, no. we're not no. a five hundred one C three five or something. Yeah. Okay. Um. I remember putting some number in for the Yeah, we have an EIN and we have some other tax so I don't stuff. know what that is. Yeah. Oh, I think that's what a lot of the grants require. I think that's what I was putting in with an EIN number. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, well, and so I remember I did ask them about the uh, the creative discourses about potential funding sources as well. And because they um you know, had they had sent this list of, of some specific foundations way back in the day. And um, and they, I mean, they basically said they were like the, in everywhere else that we're doing this, that the towns have, you know, covered the full cost of it. And even just like pointing to that the um, Montpelier Rectory School District has allocated like $100,000 for, for like di di uh, diversity equity work. Um, and so, they like were like you know here was those were the ideas that we had had last time um but like and you know potentially going back to the city and asking the city for more so that was um their 
their only real advice there. So, um, but I can I can try to see if I can dig up that old email of, of who, where they had recommended in the past. But I believe that it included um, the uh, oh my god the uh, National Life, um, which I don't think we have we have approached. So that could be another option. Well, can I can I then just add, ask that we add to the uh, uh, agenda uh, an item about Got it. Oh, I'm sorry. About I thought we were <laughs> for today. No, about, I'm talking about it. About about fundraising, just um, outside of of the context of CD uh, mm -hmm. of creative discourse. Uh, I wonder That's if anybody... thing my computer just rebooted. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <Rain time. laughs> so. I wonder if so. I don't have much experience in fundraising. Um, I don't know if other folks do. Is there are there some experts in the community we might invite to help us think through this? Well, can we talk about that the next meeting? I mean that sure. that might be that that was my point that if if we're going to be getting into this we really should think about what we're getting ourselves into and yeah. how we're going to do it. So um, I, I think a you know a focused conversation on that deserves a place on the agenda. Okay, sounds good. Is it? That, that makes sense. The only thing that jumps to mind and just thinking because it might be someone maybe we'd invite to a meeting, um, like that chair of the Vermont or the Montpelier Community Fund who presented, who works for the Vermont Community Foundation. Christ like I wonder if- Christine Zaki, yeah. Like would she be willing to talk to us to give us um, I, I, I could certainly ask if you want, if you want me to invite her to do that. Um, um, I think maybe we could talk about that next week, but yeah, all right. And I, so, but, um, yeah, I just think opening the conversation so we ha we have a so that we have an uh, idea about whether this is wh what we want to do, and then we can talk about how we're going to do it, and then we can get Christine to to come and yeah. talk with us. Yeah. Okay. Well, the other thing I was wondering um, with. Janelle stepping down, like, do we need to put recruitment back on the agenda? Is there more focused or? Um, yeah, didn't didn't we have a, someone visit us who was interested? What happened to her? Um, Two folks, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been um, sending the invites to her. She just isn't coming. <laughs> <laughs> Her name was it's a little bit more of a nudge. Yeah, yeah, Moa. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's pretty clear. Okay. Let's add recruitment. As I'll talk. We don't have to talk about it, but I'll add it anyway in case we do. Thank you. Your next meeting will be on the 17th. 17th, 8, 30, 10. All right. Um, so looks like we're ready to adjourn. Is that correct? Yep. Um, do we need a motion to do that? Yes. Right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> it's one of those things where as long as there's no objection, you're good to go. <laughs> oh, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope everyone Alrighty. has a great day. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy the snow as much as actual Vermonters can. I will be hiding in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. I'm Bye. sorry. I for today, but I appreciate it. Good luck, Shane. I, I hope my first yeah, time today goes up. Not, not, um, I know. Just, well, my computer is a backup, so that's great. Okay. The <laughs> most, uh, I once read an article about, I once read a, um, an article, and it goes in New Yorker about the most dangerous words in the English language. And the guy, and the writer, it was Calvin Trillin, said, update. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
the computer is updating them now. Yeah. Bye, y'all. Bye. 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 It only takes two and a half hours. Okay, see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>